Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Application Security Podcast. This is Chris Romeo, Chief Security Officer at Security Journey, also co-host of the podcast with my good friend, Robert Hurlbut. Hey, Robert, how are you today? Uh, good, Chris. Yeah, I'm Principal Application Security Architect at Acquia and Threat Modeling Lead, and really looking forward to our conversation today to talk about security headers. Yeah, it's, it's the thing that I feel like a lot of developers will tell you they understand what a security header is. But then maybe not if they take a quiz on security headers, but we'll see where we, where we land as we go there. So we're, we're joined by Dominique Rigetto. Dominique is the project lead or one of the leads for the OWASP Secure Headers Project. But before we get to that, our audience, as you know, is on the edge of their seats waiting to hear, Dominique, your security origin story. So I um, come from the development world, so I discovered the security during my development work, uh, during the different security activities that was per that were performed on my uh, project. And based on that, I was confronted by uh, to, to vulnerability and so on. So by the time I started to learn what is the issue and so on. And finally, I decided to move on the other side in order to to better understand what is uh, application security and help the development team to to add security into the project life cycle. So I discovered the security by being confronted to it and then decide to move into this form. And I know I've seen your name attached to various things in OWASP for a number of years. So how did you get connected into OWASP and what did you what did you what were you working on in those early days? In, when I decided to move to security in 2011, and I quickly seen a reference to WASP, and I decided to to take a look on the wiki. And by the time, with the help of many people and folks, they helped me to to start contribute to, by learning, by fixing some typo or proposing some bunch of code. And later, and when the foundation decided to move to GitHub, um, it's it become more easy to contribute. So I start to to contribute to the Chichi series. And one or one year later, um, Jim proposed me to to join the project to finalize the move from the wiki to um, to the to the GitHub. And was uh, this move was finished and uh, the. the uh, flagship level was uh, achieved. I decided to retire to let uh, the project to other people to make a, a new round with new ID, new perception, and uh, I stepped back to to other contribution. And recently, I joined the, the WASP security header project for which I was contributing for almost one year in order to make a one round up. That's why I, I discover and contribute to WASP uh, since. Uh, 10, day, 10, uh, 10 years, I think. Nice. Very cool. I'm uh, just thinking you mentioned the OWASP wiki and like a few years in the future, they'll, that'll be a, de a demarcation point. Like, were you, were you an OWASP person when we were on the wiki or, or only after the move to GitHub? You know, that'll be like a, a badge of honor. Like I trudged through the wiki for, you know, 17 hours to try to find the OWASP top 10. And I eventually found it was in there somewhere. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just been poking a little fun at the history of OWASP. No, uh, no one was harmed in the, uh, this attempted at humor. <laughs> well, the, um, OWASP uh, security headers uh, project, and that's something you've been working on. And we're going to talk about today, but before we dive into that, um, you mentioned that your background's in development. Mine is as well. And I can remember many years uh, working on web development and learning about uh, HTTP headers. And then uh, almost 10 years ago, learning about the security aspects or the different uh, tags and so forth that I can use for, for those. But uh, for our audience, uh, just to give us some background, what's an HTTP header and um, what's the value to security? Um, an HTTP header is a piece of information that is carried by the, the HTTP container envelope. Uh, can be uh, in response or a request, but we will focus here on to the response. So it's a piece of information that contains a name and a value. And this information will be uh, on and interpreted by a different device and finally by the browser. And the browser will use uh, this information to do something. 
for example, if you take the content type header, it will be used by uh, by the browser to know which type of resource it it, it will handling for it will hand, sorry. For example, if we take a content type to a PNG, it will indicate to um, to a browser, okay, I have received an image, so I must start my image renderer to display it. So if we talk about security, a response header is the same thing. It's a piece of information that will uh, indicate to the browser to take any action, uh, trigger some defenses, or uh, do some uh, some some processing. How do developers react to security headers? Do they, in your experience, I know you've you've been around developers, you've been around AppSec. Do do you find that developers? feel like they understand the security headers or is this is this like an area where teams need to put more focus on explaining teaching the benefits and and cause and effect of the security headers uh, most of the developers that i have met um, are really happy to implement any security features that is proposed from uh, but most of the time they didn't have the time to do it because they are um, focused on their uh, job uh, and this job is very hard today because it's there are many technology involved. So um, they are very happy to implement it. They, they know what is a HTTP header. Uh, perhaps they don't know uh, different security header, but they are happy to implement. But uh, the main issue is just a matter of time. And the main problem in the header, we will see later, it's uh, to know which header it's possible to use, how to use it, what it what it do, and how to use it to not break the application because. Uh, with some header, for example, with the content security policy, you can break an application with one header. So uh, developers are very happy to to include security, but they need help to to not lose lose the time to do it because it's another area. So um, I consider that uh, as a security mainly focus uh, faults, it's my job to uh, my duty to uh, to make the the possible that uh, this uh, header security measure and so on be transparent for uh, for them someday i hope to meet one of the three people that can truly implement a csp from the internet there, there's i'm convinced there's only three people that can <laughs> that can do it in the world I, i'm i'm joking there's probably four people that can actually do implement a true csp content security policy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's there's some complexity there that we have to overcome. And so that's why I'm excited to learn more about the OWASP security headers project. So from a mission and scope perspective, what is, why do we have an OWASP security headers project? It's a really good question. In fact, the, the main objective of the OWASP security header is to uh, raise awareness about the header so in the show to um, indicate to different people that the uh, this set a set of security header exists the second point is how to use it and uh, provide a recommended configuration to use it this is um, a high level objective if we if we deep dive the other objective is to provide all the work related to the header it from the information sur, uh, about the header, which which header are possible to use, how to use them, and uh, do a technical validation to be sure that the header are, are uh, valid on which browser, and provide an accurate information, and aside provide, for example, tools to validate the configuration, but in a more portable possible, uh, for example, uh, to allow any people to apply uh, testing on either whatever is positioned that are in infrastructure, in development, and so on, and provide, for example, also statistics using uh, around uh, about the usage of uh, HTTP security header around the world to to have some kind of overview of the usage, and also uh, information about header that must be removed, for example, to not disclose information. So it's uh, really the OWASP security header is really a focus job on the HTTP security header. So one, then one, the one to add, uh, to add to for, to add security and one to remove to do not uh, make the information disclosure. But also, uh, tools to, uh, element materials to test it and also element to configure. One of the goal of the, 
or task of the OWASP creator is to provide an API, a REST API, to allow to, for example, when you uh, provision a web server, you say, okay, you call the API, you say, okay, I want the secure configuration for uh, an Apache. It provides to you the right configuration uh, directly usable for an Apache. It's one of the tasks. So the, the work, it's, uh, or it's uh, really focused on the header to provide um, all the elements needed to, to have a complete uh, understanding and effective work on the header. It's a question that was uh, asked by the project committee, why the project can cannot just be a cheat sheet. It's, it's uh, rare questions. And it can be, it can be, but we have decided to, um, to create a project to be able to focus on all the area of the header from the knowledge to the technical research, in the research, survey, and so on, to the um, tooling, and so on, and stay consistent. So stay consistent on these topics and be sure to focus all the energy on the roundabout of, of the header and keep the information up to date. Because, uh, for example, for browser uh, move every quickly, for example, for Chrome, you, uh, Chrome Chromium, you have, for example, three, uh, three release by month. And... Chrome is very active. Uh, Google and uh, Chrome is are very active in terms of security. So for, uh, they they start to support or propose a security header quickly. Or uh, so it's uh, important to, for us to propose uh, an up-to-date information by uh, analyzing the documentation from Google, the new header to test uh, does it is still supported on which browser? What is the difference between the specification? Or it's expected to work in this way, but when I use it on Chrome, uh, it's not totally the same thing. But it's okay and document it. So it's a reason. It's a very the goal of the project. Yeah, and I just realized I I, I called the wrong name. It's the OWASP Secure Headers Project. Yes, I called it the Security Headers. I mean, I'm. There's going to be. I'm going to get some some dangerous mail or something no. for, for for using the wrong name here. No problem. So, uh, help us understand if you could um, an example of I have a, a header that I'm interested in and security ramifications uh, for that. So, could you take mm -hmm. us through that and maybe even maybe how the OAuth Secure Headers project could help us out? Yes, uh, on the, the main. The main face of uh, the security header, it's a documentation project. So when you go into the website, you will see different tab and you will have a tab on which that security header response. So you will have the different header. And for example, you will say you are interested in uh, one header. For example, we can see clear seed data. You have heard about that and you want to know how to use it or what is it. So on the side, you will find the, the header in which state it is, for example, if it's a uh, um, experimental, mature, or retire. And you will see, uh, what are the different options, a link to official documentation, most of the time, Mozilla and so on. And you will have the, rec the different possible options, and you will have the recommended configuration that we propose to use. For example, and, and, and using this way, you will be able to quickly spot what is the there, what is, uh, how to use it, how to, uh, how you, do we propose to use it? And additional, few additional pointer. If you want to, uh, to go deeper or if you want to, uh, to, to deep dive into some specificities. And aside, you will have, um, a test case in order to test your world configuration. And this is, this is uh, the same the ID for all the, um, all the headers. The so objective is really to be. So maybe uh, let's look. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's let's look at one of them specifically. Yes. So I'm looking at. I'm not going to do content security policy. <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, let's look at clear site data. Yes. So I'm looking at this at the page right now. Mm -hmm. I click on clear site data, and then I'm looking at kind of a description, and then some values, and then an example. Mm -hmm. So. So basically, just to make sure I understand. So as a developer, I can the, the I go to this document. I can read a description of what clear site data is, and then you're showing me what are the different possible values, and then you're giving me an example. Is the example designed to be like a secure, like what I should Norma use? Norma is that supposed to teach me what I should Normally, use? Normally, yes. Normally, yes. Uh, the default uh, that we uh, that we specify in the example can be used as is in order to prevent any uh, copy paste uh, that cause security issue. And in other in another tab, you will all have all the recommended values. So for each header, you will have the recommended value into the documentation. And if you want to have a bundle, the bundle of header, normally you have uh, another tab with the uh, recommended uh, configurations. 
and uh, all the all okay. the operations that we perform are open in a way. For example, if someone finds the default value is not is too uh, too open, it's perfectly okay. We raise an issue and we fix uh, and we fix uh, the during the day. We make some different testing. For example, people bring us uh, at our attention that for the CSP it was uh, too too open. We have discussed a little bit publicly. All the thing, all the discussion are public, and we have uh, uh, fixed uh, quickly. So the objective is also to centralize all into the one location that we can update after uh, an issue and so on. Because we never pretend to have the right answer for all. So the objective is to propose one uh, starting path, starting proposal, and uh, if uh, someone uh, thinks that uh, an option can be better, we can discuss, and we are uh, really open to that. Okay, so we talked about kind of the guidance mm -hmm. side of this. What are the other pieces? You mentioned in your overview that there was a couple other things like tools and code libraries and REST API. Let's dive a little deeper into like, for example, the, the tools mm -hmm. guidance. Like is this, are these tools that you're building inside of the project? Or are you pointing me to other things that I can use to, for example, validate my headers? Like what am I finding with tools? In fact, we propose... In the project, we propose a um, pointer to different libraries that you can use that support header, for example, in Rust and so on. But in addition, we provide an, um, a test plan that uh, that is defined. For example, if you want to, to validate that your uh, the header configuration to follow the recommendation of the OWASP um, secure header project, you can use it. The test plan, they, they do not require to code. It's a Venom test plan. Venom is a tool developed by, um, it's an open source tool developed by uh, OVH, um, that uh, French uh, hosting provider. And it's a um, functional testing uh, tools. It's not a security tools, it's a functional testing tools. And we have uh, provided a test plan right in YAML, in YAML, for, sorry, that you can use as this or adapt without any coding. You just uh, adapt the values that you want, header and so on. And you can run it with the tools to, to test your, uh, your configuration. So we provide and we always update this test plan according to our recommendations. The objective is to provide a way for people, from people from the development, people from the infrastructure, people from the testing, the security, to have um, a portable way to, to test their configuration without the need to be uh, to, to code something, compile something, and so on. So this is the first tool that we propose. The second one is uh, statistics. It just, in fact, we gather statistics about uh, usage of security header uh, for the uh, 200,000 uh, first sight of the um, Alexia top. And you, and you generate some statistics every month. And the last tools that we, we want to, we expect to build, it's a REST API uh, that will provide you um, the direct configuration for your web server. For example, you indicate, I want the, the, uh, the recommended header configuration secure header for uh, an APG. It will uh, generate to you the configuration that you can directly add to your uh, to your setup. For example, when you when you set up the dynamically uh, an Apache or, or 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 another web server, it's a project that we want to to add. So just to make sure I understand mm -hmm. from the developer's perspective, so. In the GitHub mm -hmm. repo, there's a, I'm looking at the headers, which is, this is the scanning mm -hmm. tool. So as a developer, I can use this to scan my application just to see how I yes. do yes. against all yes. the different headers. So this is going to give me, it's going to give me like, it's like a, it's something I could even add it to my CICD pipeline if good... I wanted to, to scan and so, so is it designed to be something? Ah, yes, for, pipeline, yes, for like sure, for sure. World? In fact, it's the reason why uh, we um, we, d we expect to provide a REST API and no uh, uh, UI tools, because we think that this kind of verification should be automated. For example, it's in CI/CD and post deployment step. Step, for example, you deploy your application. You 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 can use these tools to ensure that your your header is still uh, as you expected or uh, or are expected as you want. So. Every tools or every every um, element that you create, tools and so on, are designed to be used in a fully automated way. So without any human intervention. Venom, it's a command line tool that is a portable in Go, and you uh, and you you run it and you say, okay, um, you must expect to have this kind of thing. If it fails, it raises your report and so on. 
So all is designed or will be designed to be run in a CI CD pipeline or uh, an, auto, an automation uh, provisioning script like uh, infrastructure as code. And then the stats project, is this, so what would a developer use the OSHP stats um, it's project? More, in for? fact, it's not really, this, this one is not ready for developer. It just, um, what can I say? Just aware, awareness or uh, in order to, when we want, when we, uh, we see, a, um, when we talk about a security header, it, uh, the objective is to show always popular on the internet, uh, it is used or not, which configuration, which configuration is popular and so on. It's just, um, pure, pure information just by curiosity. It's not, it's, uh, this one is not useful for, uh, for a developer. It's more, uh, it's more, for example, if, um, uh, people want to add some header, some security header on, on their site and want to say what are the common header to add and so on and, uh, just to give some, um, some overview. So it's more for for people like us that study yes, the industry, yes, yes. and we want to know we want to yes. know like how many how many what percentage of the top websites are yes. using particular Total. headers. It gives us the ability to collect that data and then analyze it and get a better feeling for how security headers are being implemented across Total. the internet. Excellent. Well, Dominic, really appreciate your time here and uh, talking about secure headers, uh, secure headers project and security headers and how we can uh, uh, get better at uh, developing and implementing and testing and, and so forth. Um, if you would uh, give us some of your final thoughts and uh, maybe some key takeaways for our listeners to help them out and getting started. In fact, uh, development teams, uh, security dev can see the header as um, another layer of defense. So in a way in which um, header will not make your application secure, but it can help you to decrease the exploitability of an issue. If we take the CSP, for example, it will not make your application uh, secure by default, but if you have an XSS, it can help to make it more hardly exploitable and then give you time to, to fix the issue on the server side. So I, I always, uh, I always say, uh, see, um, header as a way to buy time. For example, you discover that you have an XSS in your, uh, in your application in production. So it's, uh, it's stressful, but it can, uh, if you add, for example, a CSP, because you cannot touch your application because, uh, for business purpose, it can help to, uh, to slow down the temperature, slow down the stress and say, okay, we can, uh, we can take one day, two day, to to um, smoothly uh, analyze the application to correctly patch the issue and do not uh, but because we have had a, a CSP for example on the web server just to make the issue more difficult to exploit or for example using notification um, um, for example detect when it is exploited in order to to buy time to to be uh, more careful when we uh, when we will analyze the application on the server so it can be used uh, it can be seen as a way to uh, to buy time to smoothly uh, patch an application so it's important for me to keep an eye on it in order to add it in case of need or if uh, someone is interesting and uh, because in fact modern browser like chrome provide plenty of security feature and uh, it's very interesting to to leverage the, the the security feature provided by the browser as a as another layer of defense so it's uh, why security header it's uh, it's interesting and it's why this project was created i know we were at, i know we were at we were at our key takeaways but i'm going to circle this back around cuz I, I have another question if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a uh, developer who hasn't done anything with security headers before, I'm listening to this conversation and I'm hearing about OWASP has a project. I can go, I can I can raise awareness about it. I can learn what some of these headers are. Dominique, what else? Would, what would be the next couple of steps that you would recommend for somebody who's brand new to this security headers thing? They listen to the interview. They go check out the website. What should? What are like the top two or three things they should do to really to really get security headers going? In the project? first thing is to um, discover. Go to the to the main pages to discover the available header, and then I will say um, discuss with the with the 
between the development team to see which header has a, are accurate for the context of the application. So I will say one, go to the site to discover the header, see what will be relevant, discuss with the security guys uh, of the team to discuss what, which are relevant for the, for the project. And then start, start implementing uh, them uh, in a um, incremental way. Because when you work with header, um, you work, you should work in an incremental way. Just add one. And when it's okay, add another, another, another. Same for the CSP. CSP, you start by a small one and a one and another one and a one and a one. So take your time. Just read the documentation, discuss with the security folks on the team, start implementing one and so on and so on. Yeah, I think that's good advice. That's good advice for almost everything in security. Start with small, get some success, from there. and then move forward and build up. Well, Dominique, thank you for taking the time to share the OWASP Secure Headers project with us and with our listeners. Um, I didn't know it existed, so I've been browsing and, and understanding the project better even as we've been discussing. And so I want to encourage our listeners to go check out the project and really get a grasp of these secure headers it's really not that difficult. You can add these things into your application as Dominique has shared and the project is there to help you understand what are the headers, what are you, what should you do with them? And then you've got a suite of tools or tests that you can incorporate into your build pipeline, into your testing to ensure that you're doing a, a, a good enough job from a secure headers perspective. So Dominique, thank you for sharing this wisdom with us. And we look forward to an upcoming conversation about whatever it is next you're doing within the OWASP uh, world. I don't know for the moment. I will, uh, for the moment, I will uh, work for our format, the project, go to the medium uh, medium level, and after we will see. <laughs> Have a nice day, and thanks for the, for the invitations. <laughs>